I think we've almost looped back around to the start. Yeah, you can see the arrival pagoda in the distance. And here's that exit track I was pointing at a minute ago. It's pretty low to the ground. If one of those ice spheres came rolling through, I could probably punch it out from down here. I wouldn't do it though, unless I brought a bunch of band-aids with me or something. And maybe a hand surgeon too. Speaking of bad things to punch, I think a lantern with a fire marble in it would be pretty high on the list. But enough talk about this self-destructive violence. Look at these pretty rocks. There's a whole forest of them. And someone was considerate enough to hack away at their base so that people of all shapes and sizes can fit through. And hey, isn't this familiar? Well, maybe not, it's a little hidden from here. Recognize it yet? It's a little conspicuous that this track dead ends instead of turning around and going back into the funhouse. Uh, I'm not so sure this little rope ladder would support all the shapes and sizes that walk through the rock forest. Well, here we are back on the starting line, so that completes the tour of Amateria. Looking back at those rock... trees, see these little blue swirlies on them? Are they a natural crystal part of the rock, or are they just old school graffiti? Maybe they have to be viewed from a certain angle. V. For very confusing. I still haven't seen any clues for what to put in there yet. Alright, let's go back around again and try to solve the puzzles now. Actually, let's go around the other way this time. I think I once said something about how it adds a new perspective to a familiar place. The sun just peeks right through there, doesn't it? Wait, what is that thing? I don't remember seeing that when I was up there. Looks like it lights up the hexagons. Gonna have to take a look at that next time. Well, since we're heading back the way we came, the first puzzle we'll try to solve will be the turntable tracks. The door is somewhere along this wall, but it all kind of looks the same from here. Well, these little stone tiles look like they point the way, so that's a pretty good clue. Depending on where you look, another name you might hear for the turntable tracks is the Wheels of Wonder. I didn't make either name up, but whichever you prefer, there's some alliteration going on. Alright, so we have to solve this puzzle by placing these three pegs into these ten spaces. Or nine, because this one's unavailable. Well, if you're familiar with combinatorics, you can calculate there are 84 possible ways to put the pegs in here. Which is a little high for just blind trial and error, so first let's try to narrow this down logically. We know that the orb starts right here on the left turntable and we've already determined that it can't go straight to the exit in one shot. Therefore, the orb's gonna land somewhere else on the right turntable, 
Then it'll spin some more and launch back over to the left side. And only then, after rotating one more time, will it hopefully be in position to shoot into the exit. So the basic pattern is left, right, left, and in. So since it's going to be launched from the left side twice, that implies that two of the pins must be placed in the left wheel, while the other will be placed in the right wheel. Now there are only 30 combinations that fit this restriction, which is an improvement over 84, but we can still do better than this. Let's focus on just the right turntable for a second. When the orb lands over here and rotates and heads back, we don't want a situation where one of these trays ends up covering the exit. Since this turntable is only going to rotate one time, if that happened, then there would be no way to rectify it. So since one of the open spaces covers the exit initially, and the trays appear on every other ring around the turntable, this turntable must rotate an even number of spaces to keep it open. That means the lone peg over here must be placed in one of the two blue positions on this wheel. Another way to think about it is, if it's placed on one of the white positions instead, then if the orb doesn't end up out here and crash, then it will necessarily fall through one of these rings into the ocean, but that might be a little harder to see. However you want to look at it, forcing the pin to go in one of the blue spaces reduces the number of possibilities down to 12, because that's two-fifths of 30, right? Anyway, let's apply similar reasoning to the left side now. Just like with the right side where we had to keep this spot open, we're going to have to make sure one of the trays on the left side winds up here, so that it'll have a chance to launch into the exit. And since a tray is here to start with, and they alternate just like the other side, this turntable must also rotate an even number of spaces in total. This means that one of the pegs must be placed in a blue position on the left side as well. But of course, this spot's all clogged up, so one of the pegs has to go right here. And this would be the left wheel's second pin, because we're talking about the turntable's final state. Which means the first pin cannot go right here, because otherwise it would not be the first pin, it would be the second pin. Pin, peg, pig, pen? I don't know. Anyway, what this means is, the first peg on the left side has to be placed in one of these two spots. The second peg on the left has to go right here, and the peg on the right needs to be placed in one of these two spots. This narrows it down to just four possibilities, and we haven't even started the trial and error process. But four is pretty manageable now, so we might as well experiment a little bit. Let's see what happens if we put a peg right here. Well, if we started it up now, then this peg would rotate one space and fall through. The orb, of course, would also rotate one space and then jump through this track and land on the other side right here. So where should we put the peg on this side? Well, remember we only have two choices, so let's just pick one here. In this position, the turntable is set to rotate four spaces but that would mean the orb would end up out here, so that isn't going to work. So now we're down to just three possibilities. So how about this one? Well, that would mean it would rotate two spaces instead, so the orb will end up under a track this time and jump back over to this side. Now by this point, the left wheel already rotated one space when the first peg fell through, so the second peg is now at the top of the wheel. That means this time around, it will rotate three more spaces and fall through as well. The orb will rotate right along with it and end up right here, which means now it's going to launch through this track and go back through the start. Well, it's not what we're looking for, but that might be interesting to see.
Ho! They did prepare for this. Someone hung up a samurai sword or something here. It's a good thing, too. Otherwise, the orb might roll all the way up and damage the cupola. Or perhaps it would lose momentum and roll all the way back down, sending it back through the machine in a perpetual loop. Wait, that can't happen. The pegs already fell through. Oh yeah, that means I'm gonna have to put them back again. Oh well. So, yeah, let's get back to solving the puzzle now. So we already know one of the pegs goes right here. And we were trying to get it to work with another peg right here. But we already tried to put the third peg in each of the blue spaces on the right and it failed both times. So this peg can't go here. Instead, it's gotta go here. So both of these pegs are definitely in their correct positions now. So all we have to worry about are the two options for the peg on the right. But what would happen if we started up the machine right now? Well, this peg would rotate three spaces and drop through, which means the orb would rotate three spaces and jump along the track on the far side and land right here. So now we gotta put that peg somewhere. Um, how about here? Well, that would mean the orb would rotate two spaces and end up out here. This is no good, so the peg has to go in the other spot. So, this is it. This must be the only correct solution. We've ruled out everything else. But let's finish tracing where the orb goes anyway. As it's currently set up, it's going to rotate four spaces and land here. Then it'll jump back over to this side right here. And by this point, this peg will have already rotated all the way over here. So now it's just got one more space to go. So the orb will also rotate one more space and finally head into the exit. Thank goodness. Excellent! The Wheels of Wonder are now solved. And we get one of those hexagon codes to boot. It also has a green border around it. Have to wonder what the significance of that is. And we can't play it again, but I guess it'll remember where we put the pegs, even though they fell through. It also showed one of the three bridges rising out of the water near the finish track. I guess that would mean there would be one for each puzzle. All right, I guess that's all we need to do up here. So now that the puzzle is solved, is it even possible to go up there again? Nope. That's too bad. I kind of like the view up there. Here's that wooden pike that kills wayward orbs. I'm pretty sure I looked at this from down here before, so raise your hand if you noticed it the first time. <laughs> 